beautiful Jerusalem, our capital. Jerusalem's in the news all the time and it will be till the end of time. Um, this biggest drone and missile attack in history is just, people are still reeling from it. They're reeling and Israel's right now in the war room still trying to decide what to do, how to respond. Do we strike the heart of Iran? Do we strike their nuclear facility in Natanz in that mountain there? The question is, will, I know that America said they don't want to back Israel in that, um, but we can't just do nothing, right? And uh, will America try to restrain Israel from responding to Iran's grotesque attacks. I mean, firing ballistic missiles, cruise missiles, you know, uh, it was a shadow war before that because they were always just going through their proxies. So it was like a shadow war. But suddenly five, suddenly a 45 year shadow war came into light. And it was spectacular to really see. Think about this, uh, you know, stopping 99% of these missiles. And think of this, this how, how even Jordan and Saudi Arabia, France, United Kingdom, United States, help to ward off these attacks over their sky is where a lot of these were shot down. And I think of this ancient story of Persia in the Bible as I'm walking here at the ancient walls that King David uh, would walk on and King Solomon and the prophets of the Bible. You know, I think of this Persia war against Israel, this hatred uh, against Israel. And I think about it, even if today we went and fought with them, destroyed all their nuclear facilities, all their army. You know what? Still the Ezekiel 38 war is still coming. That big war where Russia will join. Welcome to the gates of Jerusalem. Welcome to the Temple Mount. Boom. Isn't that? That's the place where so much has happened and will happen. So there's going to be an Ezekiel 38 war. It's called Gog and Magog. It's going to happen where Russia leads the way, Persia joins with them, and so we have to be ready for that. We have to have peace in these times. Some trust in chariots, King David said right over here in our capital. Some trust in horses, but we'll remember the name of the Lord, our God. You know, now Iran is extremely strong. They're what, 14 in the world of, of military strength? I guess they have a total military personnel, I think of something like 400,000 people, uh, and they have the army, they got an air force, they have a revolutionary guard, which is another 190,000 people, and so that's, that's 588,000. Then they have, of course, um, tanks, like 2,000 tanks, about 70,000 or so, uh, uh, armored vehicles, artillery pieces, missiles, drones. Um, the IRGC, or the Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps, also controls the Bazij, which is a paramilitary force with a controversial size claim of 12.6 million members, the Bazij force. Now, I didn't even know about this. Is that even real? 12.6 million people, don't forget, we only have 9 million, 7 million Jews here, 9 million total people, people, men, women, and children in this country of ours. So that's a lot of people to go against. And they've got all these aircraft, you know, uh, they have uh, how many helicopters, how many planes? They have 19 submarines is what I heard. Um, their defense budget is about 25 billion, according to Wikipedia. So they're a formidable foe, my friends. And we have a small army. We're a tiny country here. And I'm just looking at the, looking at the Dome of the Rock here. All right, but God is on our side. The prophecies that say God will protect Israel. He's not gonna let us be destroyed and Yes, there's also all these proxies I didn't calculate in. Yemen, Hezbollah, you know, you got the Hamas, the Islamic Jihad, and many, many more. But uh, I, I believe that we know together that even though we have such a small air force and such a small um, amount of tanks and stuff in comparison, we, we, we do have really good cyber warfare. We have really good intelligence, even though I know October 7th happened and our intelligence failed there. but. We do have good in general intelligence. U.S. administration is saying, you know, we have a victory, just take the win, take the win. We don't need to do any more action, we're fine. But no, it's not a victory. It's like we just got assaulted. If a bully hits you 350 times, you know, it, it, that's not a win. You know, even though we intercepted, it's not really a win. So I'm not telling you what I think we should do. And, and the fact that, that Amina El Surni, you know, she's this Bedouin girl, seven year old, was hurt, injured. She's fighting for her life right now. That's who the Iranians hit was a Bedouin girl. 
Islamic Republic of Iran made a huge mistake right now. They've been wreaking havoc all over, but they've done something. They've taken this to the next level. Their tentacles of this octopus in Syria, in Yemen, in Iraq, in Lebanon, in Gaza, of course. As I continue to defend Israel, I'm looking at this octopus and I'm saying, let's not just fight the arms. We must eventually know whether we like it or not, we're going to have to look to this powerful regime. And, and my prayer is that this regime will, will not be an export of the Islamic revolution, but it'll be, the, it'll be the revolution of getting to know the God of Israel. There's about 100,000 people, evacuated families that need our help right now. There's 1.9 million people in Israel in poverty, about 100,000 uh, soldiers in reserves right now about 873,000 uh, children living in poverty. And I wanna say guys, as Passover is here, first of all, join our Passover. Please join the live event, sign up, go to aliyahreturncenter.com, sign up. But won't you help get these families some gift packages? Won't you help us to bless them? And thank you for your great, great generosity. And remembering, hey, Egypt was the strongest army in the world at the time. And on Passover, we saw mighty miracles. We are seeing mighty more, many more mighty miracles today. God bless you from Jerusalem, from our capital.